Consider a five by five cubicle furnace shown in the figure whose surface closely approximate black surfaces. Okay, so you don't need to worry about how much you're gonna be emitting or receiving. Um, the base top and side of the furnace are maintained at uniform temperature of 800, 1500, and 500 respectively. Okay, so we have 800, 500, and 1500 as per the image. Determine the net rate of radiation heat transfer between the base and the side surfaces, the net rate of radiation heat transfer between the base and the top surface, and the net radiation heat transfer from the base surface. Okay, so we're gonna go into this drawing here and we're actually gonna draw, I'm gonna draw the net Q for what's going on here, okay? So from the um, top guy, you see the top guy is the, the warmest of them all. So the top guy is gonna be delivering energy to the bottom guy, yeah? And it will also be delivering energy to the side guys. Okay, so all the sides there. And the this guy has the smallest temperature, so this won't be delivering any Q net. And T1 is gonna be delivering to the sides as well. So that will be kind of our graphical representation of what's going on, okay? In reality, right, in reality, as we talked about, this guy is gonna be sending energy to this guy, 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 right? But it will be receiving more energy from this guy here. So instead of putting all these arrows back and forth, all we do is we just eliminate the ones that are the same and just keep the difference, which is a Q net. All right, now the whole idea around this problem is that the things, that the surfaces don't see all these, uh, this surface can see several things, right? This, the bottom one here can see the side surfaces, has four options for the sides and one option for the top one there. So we need to use some of the logics around shape factors to be able to solve this problem because Q net, if we were just to find Q net between two things, so Q net between say one and two, which is the bottom and the top according to the numbering there, will be how much the first, the number one sees two, times its emissivity is one, so I'm gonna ignore that, times its area, times the constants, times the difference in temperature from one to two, right? That will be, that will be the equation. So the, the whole point is to find these guys to be, so that we can calculate the things we need to calculate. All right, now this guy is an enclosed space, so because it's an enclosed space, there's a little, idea we can use, which is, there's no other way for this energy to go. There's no other way, other place for this energy to go, right? And in other words, if you think about the energy that's leaving one, okay, it all has to go to somewhere inside the cube because they're all, it's all surrounded by the cube. There's no way for the energy leaving the top, the, the bottom here to go outside there, right? They're all black bodies are absorbing all the energy. So that means that how much the bottom sees itself plus how much the bottom sees the top plus how much the bottom sees the sides has to be equal to one, okay? And note that I'm considering the sides as opposed to just this one side because they're all at 500. So it's easier for us to think about three surfaces, right? So like picture this guy as being four times the area of one side, then to actually try to do the math for each of them and then multiply by four, okay? But because there's no other way for the energy to go, then F, the sum of the, Shape factor has to be one. Okay, and note that this all we're just, all we're saying is that the sum of all the energy that's leaving the body has to be 100% of the energy. So, sum of all the energy has to be all the energy. It's a very simple statement that this this is making here. Okay, what else? Next thing we're going to note is that there's this flat surface here, right? The bottom guy. I'm thinking only about the bottom at the moment. The bottom guy. I should probably use this one too for this drawing. The bottom guy is a flat surface. So what does that mean? It means that it's not um, sending any energy to itself, right? It cannot see itself. And that co goes back to the, the theory that we discussed in the beginning of the today's tutorial, right? Let me just draw this. The atoms on the surface here, right? What they are seeing are things outside the flat surface because whatever energy it sends this way, it's just gonna stay inside the atom. So it's not really energy that's being emitted, right? It's just energy that the, the uh, body has. So whenever we have a flat surface or for that, for that fact, whenever we have a convex surface as well, right? 
it can never see itself so in these cases f11 will be zero so that goes away nicely for us zero All right and the other thing we're going to note is that um one and two are parallel to each other which is uh, i missed the uh, yes right parallel to each other okay which means that we can use this kind of graph here so whenever we're trying to solve for uh, shape factors what we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, do a little observation see if we can find any flat surfaces convex surfaces we're going to do uh, we're going to use reciprocity which is that equation that says if i see something that something sees me and that's proportional to my area and its area and we're going to use these relationships with uh enclosed space and the, then we jump into graphs to be able to grab the remaining information so this one is for two parallel surfaces which is our case in this case this would be our um what was it two so this would be our two and this would be our one there and the d is the distance between the two of them and we know that this guy is a cube and it has five meters by five meters by five meters so all these guys are going to be five but i ask you guys to be cautious when you do these things here when you convert from a drawing into the schematic because it's a place to go wrong easily so this will be five in our case this would be five in our case and this would be five so this one is easy no really going wrong and what we're trying to find is if i want to find from one to two i want to find the shape factor from one to two then what i have to do is find the ratio between y and d and the ratio between x and d and with that i can find the shape factor from one to two okay in our case here it's going to be from one to two so what's the ratio there well the ratios are going to be one right so five over five that'll be one and over here same thing five over five that'll be one so that means that i'm looking for a point that where this line here intersects this line here and you guys can see that happens right here and if i follow that probably with the green not going to be easier for us to see I get a shape factor of 0.2. Okay. So uh, 0.2. If you guys want to be really, really technical about this, right? Or what we actually should do is what we just found was 2, 1, right? 2, 1 is 0.2. And then we can use reciprocity and we'll say that two one times the area of two has to be equal to f one two times the area of one but in this case it turns out that one and two are the same so that means that therefore f two one equals f one two and they're both 0.2 so they see each other the same way because they have the same area all right and then we know that we have the we can apply this guy now because we know that this first fella here is nil this second fella here is 0 0.2 which means that this fella here is 0.8 okay so what are we saying and this is very intuitive once we understand what this is saying it is saying that on this situation here, on the situation here, the bottom side will split its energy five ways. One fifth or 20% is going to the top, one fifth is going to one side, one fifth to another side, another fifth to another side, and another fifth to the fourth side. Okay, so it's splitting its energy very equally within that cube. So it's a symmetrical um, shape, so we would expect that symmetrical result to happen right that's very intuitive all right so back to what we're looking for let's go back to our questions the net radiation heat transfer between the base and the side surfaces so we want to know what is let's write it down here f13 uh, sorry q13 q13 net radiation between the base and the top so q13 
Q12. And the net radiation from the basin. So it just wants to know what's Q net at one. Okay, so now we can solve all this because Q from one to three will be equal to F from one to three. Emissivity is one, right? Area we can calculate, and then we know the temperature of one, and we know the temperature of three. Mind you that we know beforehand, we know beforehand that the net transfer rate is going to be from one to three, right? So when we find this number, it's going to make sense for us to get a number that is positive. Okay, so Q one to three equals 0.8 times one. Uh, area is five by five, so five squared, 25 meters squared. And this guy is 800. The other guy is 500. Sorry, I missed the number there. Okay, so this is the amount of energy, and we know that this, we know that Q is, uh, Q1 is emitting, right? Is emitting, so we know it emits. I'll actually put that down here. So it's emitting, so it emits, it emits this energy. Okay, now we're gonna do the second part, part B. And part B was asking us what is one, two, okay? But one, two, we know that one, two is gonna be negative, right? It's gonna be absorbing. So we can, there's two ways as per usual, there's two ways to solve this. You can do the positive one and say by the end of it that it's emitting or use a drawing to show that you know where the energy is going to, or you can have a negative number. It's up to you, okay? As long as you do one of these things, it will be correct. So 0.2 times emissivity, which is one, the area, which is squared. And then what, is, what are the temperatures here? 1500 for the top one, which is the one that has the highest energy, and 800 for the bottom one. Okay, so Q12, um, again, converting to kilowatts, then again, 1319 kilowatts. Okay, but this time it's absorbing, right? Yeah, so figure out A and B. After we got the shape factors, that was easy. And then the last one is what is the Q net, right? What is the Q net for the base? Okay, so after everything has gone and passed, after we received all the energy from the top, after we gave away the energy to the sides, what is the um, final energy that's reaching our base? So C. Part C, Q net at the base equals Q, um, let's call it Q absorbing minus Q releasing or vice versa. I don't know what I want to do here. Just want to do, yeah, to that absorbed minus Q released or emitted. And that is 13, 19 kilowatts minus, what was the other one? 393.6 kilowatts. So this turns out to be about 925 kilowatts. And this is where you need to say, right? Absorbing energy. So the end result of this guy is that it is absorbing Absorbing. absorbing 925 kilojoules every second that elapses, right? 
Obviously, your other option would be to, be to say that the QNet is negative 925 kilowatts. But I don't know. I think that's best for you guys to understand what's going on than to use the negative numbers and get confused with it. Okay, great. Questions?